out of vain. This culture was born in life's shadowed places. The magic was born. Well, the tribes they regrouped again, formed their walls on a brand new plane, and through their strife, their manhood was reborn. And so, from all this bacchanal, life is now a festival, and you can hear the children. Art by Creative Design is a non-profit organization incorporated in 2017. It is led by a team of educators who've come together to play their part as citizens interested in the development of the education system of Trinidad and Tobago. ABCD advocates for an emphasis to be placed on the promotion and facilitation of arts education from which the benefits to our society are wide-ranging and multifaceted. A decision was made to create an innovative and cohesive approach that would assist in bringing about a positive change especially in arts education at the secondary school level. Our one-of-a-kind projects are designed to facilitate the implementation of visual and performing arts curriculum so an understanding of elements of what is being used in our nation's school at all levels is key. As a result, consultation with officials of the Ministry of Education Curriculum Development and Planning Division, our young learners and other stakeholders is critical to the development process. by Creative Design has introduced to the community of Trinidad and Tobago our flagship projects. As we move forward to obtain our objectives, the ABCD team is focused on the next phase, which is to design and utilize instruments to measure the impact of our activities. The data will allow us to further illustrate how our programs have improved our young creative artists, how the learnings impact on academic performance in other non-arts subjects, and learners' overall well-being and development. We want children to learn to love learning, and we believe that art education is key to attaining this for every child in our nation's schools. We are on a mission to encourage everyone to dream, create, and achieve. We believe art education for all, art education benefits all. And welcome everyone to another edition of our Junior Creative Studio. We have had quite a week and I am very excited for our guest this afternoon because he is one of our collaborators 
And uh, so I now waste no time in welcoming Mr. Kevin Fodderingham to our panel. Hi, Kevin. Hello, good afternoon, Yana. How are you? I am good, I am good. Uh, so nice to see you again. Yeah? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And congrats on the initiative. Thank you very much. It has been quite a week, you know. It has been quite a week. <laughs> <laughs> so I want people to know a little bit more about you. So I'm going to share your bio with everyone. Yes, I mean if you add your add up, right? Yeah. So we have Short to bio, I love bio. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It'll be good, it'll be good. All right, all right, I have it, have it. Right. Okay, take it away. In Arima, Trinidad and Tobago. Kevin Fodderingham is the executive director of CFAFF, founder for Common Good and founder of East Yard Community Art Center. With 17 years of local, regional, and international work experience in the hospitality, education, creative, and nonprofit sectors, he describes himself as an art for social change advocate. And over the years has been involved with and led several projects in Trinidad and Tobago and the Caribbean that have provided a foundation for arts and culture practitioners. Passionate about the arts, with a belief in the power of education and a mission to connect people, Kevon is building a global platform created to support cultural diplomacy, build the capacity of cultural practitioners, and promote social change through the arts, aptly dubbed for common good. Kevin uses his professional experience in marketing and communications and life coach training in his personal brand visioning practice, helping creative practitioners find and amplify the essence of their personal brands. Thank you so much, Kevin, for joining us. Yeah? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, so where do we begin? Because this is so many different facets of your journey. But let's just take, just give us a little insight into how we've reached to this point of for common good. Okay. Um, so for common good is my latest initiative, um, and I believe it will be the initiative that I will take forward for the rest of my career. Um, I really believe. Um, in the power of the arts to transform, to edify, to affect change. Um, when you look at history, when you look at world history, there are like their music, their songs, their movies that have all inspired change and movements. So I believe that um, we need to harness that, especially coming from a region where we are so creative. And I do not believe that we have yet being able to harness or understand just how powerful arts and culture is. We still see it as something that is for aesthetics, and we have not been able to, you know, use it as a weapon, use it as a tool to affect change. So I believe that that is my mission moving forward, and everything that I do is going to be imbued with that mission of using the arts to transform. Okay. I know that your, your, your travels have been wide and varied. I mean, this has really taken you to um, some unusual spots and to have <laughs> experiences, right? What have been some of the more motivational moments or or inspiring moments for you that kind of helps fuel your passion as you move forward? Okay, um, I believe a career changer for me, a life changer, was in 2019 um, when the U.S. State Department, through the U.S. Embassy here. Um, selected me to take part in the International Visitor Leadership Program, IVLP, which is the State Department's premier exchange program. And my cohort, our focus was on promoting social change through the arts. So it was myself and um, 16 other um, arts and social change advocates from around the world. Um, we were transplanted in the States for 21 days and got the opportunity to visit four different states. And each day we met with probably like a half a dozen or, or so change makers who were all really into using the arts to affect social change. And I mean, it's, you know, the states. 
So their programs were on such a scale and had such impact that it was really inspiring. And what I thought was even more inspiring is that what they do really well we don't do, they were able to measure. And I know measurement is a, is a bit of a challenge for us. I mean, there are a lot of people doing work, but how do we quantify it? Um, and when I came back home, I really decided that I really had to focus just on this. Um, even before I went, so when I got the actual package from the um, embassy, I was really intimidated by the 16 other bios that I saw there. I'm like, whoa, do I even do I even mash up to some of these people who some of them were in the Guinness Book of World Records? I mean, people who have like one dancing with the stars in their country and stuff. I'm like, so I went there with a the mindset that I had to shine. Yeah, I you know made up my mind that I had to shine and I made up my mind that I had to take this opportunity to make connections. So one of the connections I made was with the World Affairs Council of Kentucky and Southern Indiana um, when I went to Louisville, which was not one of the states high on my list to go to, but it turned out to be my favorite. And since coming home, I founded a program with them called the Arima by Louisville Exchange, which the um, embassy here has so graciously funded. And it has brought together at least 40 local creatives, artisans, change makers, educators to take part in a six month exchange with cohorts from the state of Louisville. And it has been a fantastic experience so far for them. Great, that's so fantastic. Now I know that, um, you know, for most of what we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about your work with youth. Yes. Before we move off into that, you know, um, just tell me, I know you said it was a great experience. Is there something that you can share in particular about that particular program that you figured really worked? Like, you know, that was something that you're going to hold on to and you're going to see if you can carry it over. Okay. Um, when I went to Louisville, so I keep saying Louisville because it's, it's not my favorite place. Um, there was one particular org organization, well, two. One was called Studio, Studio Works by Zoom Group. And what they do, they have a day center that caters to persons with special needs, adults with special needs. And they have been in existence for several years. So it's a drop-in center. They come there for the day and they teach these persons with special needs art. And it was so amazing because some of them have been there for like 17 years every day coming. But quite a number of them are now accomplished artists so much so one of them somebody wrote a book about her she is getting commissions from banks and museums and stuff and she is somebody with special needs but she is using her special needs to you know tell her story using the arts so that was inspiring um so much so so for our program here they are one of the partners and um our group here is learning about using the arts to empower people with special needs Another group was the Louisville Story Program. Um, an interesting thing about Louisville that I did not know is that they are designated a compassionate city. So what that means is that they welcome immigrants and refugees. So it's, so you, it actually shocked me because you know, it's from this like down south and you would think it's not as diverse, but there were people from Ethiopia, from here, from there, from everywhere. So much so one of their schools is a magnet school for persons who come in and their first language is not English. And they teach them English in high school before they transition them into the mainstream schools. Um, Seems to be getting a bit of um, a glitch. Let's hold on a bit to see if it resolves. Hello? 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 Yes, we're here. Yes. Are you 
hearing us? We are clear. Okay. Yes. <laughs> we, had, we, had to, we had to give a little grace because the connectivity is serious. You know how it goes. You know how it goes. Yeah. yeah. Weather, but don't worry. We're here to tell a story about the arts. So, right. Yeah. Telling us about um, okay, the uh, reverse story program. Yes. Um, so what they do is that they teach persons from underserved and underrepresented communities how to tell their stories using writing, and then they then publish these books. So they are a publishing company, they are an NGO, but they are training out authors who are telling these unheard stories. And I um, mean, the books, some of them are bestsellers. And I just found that really amazing. So they are one of our partners on our exchange as well. So those are two programs that I found that were really interesting. And I'm glad that you took the time and we took the time to explore that because you know one of the things that keeps coming up every time we speak about um, arts education and learning about the arts and being involved in the arts is how viable it is. And I think yes. times we have been so on hold into understanding or conceptualizing what it means to be involved in the arts industry you really figure that you may go and study arts or you're going to you're going to be a painter um you're going to draw and that's it eh? they ain't talking about yeah. it eh? yeah yeah you know you're going to dance you're going to perform but for each of these visual and performing arts areas there's such a wide range of career opportunities exactly involved in i mean like for for you i know you have a, a zafa here yeah, a zafa here right when you say you know you don't describe yourself as an art practitioner per se but look at what you have been able to do in order to create these various forums for people yeah. who do want to upgrade their skills within the different disciplines as well as connect people across the globe right and you know um art by creative design our booth is all part of the career and um, association of principals of secondary schools they are having their biennial conference it takes place this week it ends on saturday but our public forum ends tomorrow and their main area is about um breaking barriers mm. beyond the norm and i think in terms of your own initiatives you have definitely done that breaking barriers right language and all so <laughs> Yeah, language I know. So, in terms of what you have prepared for us, um, you're gonna present. Yeah. Right and stuff for us now. All right. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So let's go. Let me share. <laughs> you're seeing my screen, right? Yep, we are. Where is the present function? Yeah, there it is. Right. Okay, so today I will be presenting on the For Common Good Youth Arts Enrichment Program. What is the challenge? So you know you come up with all these initiatives and stuff, but it starts with a challenge. So this is from a global standpoint. There is declining official international development assistance, so there's less funding for programs. There are more social ills, even made more glaring by the recent pandemic, and we have a continued underutilization of the creative arts as a tool to drive social change. So this is what I thought the challenge was, and so the solution was to create this thing called the For Common Good platform. So the For Common Good platform is a physical and virtual creative arts initiative that is shining a light on the creative arts and calling on the creative people power of artists, cultural leaders, and other sectors who are already using nothing more than their creative capital and genius to mobilize culture and to create positive change. So the For Common Good platform has three basic tenets. One is cultivation. Increasing the art for social change programming knowledge of stakeholders. The second is co-creation, leading to an increase in innovative community-driven approaches to social action. And the last being connection. This is how we increase access to people, information, resources. This is how we share all of the work that everyone across the globe is doing 
using the arts to promote social change. Our organization, Caribbean Fashion and Arts Feature Festival, CFAF. So as we were speaking about before, after my participation in the IVLP program last year, I was inspired to rebrand all of CFAF's initiatives. We've been around for five years, and now we are going to be known as CFAF for Common Good. Our mission is to raise the awareness of the power of the creative arts to foster social change. Our vision to be known as the premier global platform that showcases the power of the arts to promote social change. And with a vested interest in emerging arts, education and social impact, we value innovation in programming, knowledge transfer and cultural exchange. Art plays a critical role in shaping and renewing culture. It can shine a spotlight on truth, create moments of joy, or inspire us to act. In times like these, we need to empower artists like never before to help us reflect, to rekindle our hope, and to imagine a better future. A quote from Tim Jones, the CEO of Artscape, which is a leading arts nonprofit. What is the ethos of this for common good thing that we're talking about? So now, for common good, provides participants with international exchange opportunities that teach them how to use art to transform their community. And so far, so we started this new for common good thrust, I would say in 2020. Currently, we have two main programs, which is the for common good, a remember legal exchange, which we spoke about. And of course, the For Common Good Youth Arts Enrichment Program. So, the For Common Good Youth Arts Enrichment Program, or YEP, which is currently being piloted, offers an opportunity for young people to develop their identities and build skills that will benefit them for a lifetime. So, with arts education at its core, this community driven program not only builds their visual arts, drama, music, and dance skills but also exposes them to concepts of art for social change and cultural diplomacy. So building on CFAF's previous programs, this pilot started in 2021 and allows Trinidad and Tobago-based youth between the ages of 14 and 18 to get the opportunity to participate in an exchange with champions from around the globe. So we started in February. And we have a cohort, and so far they have met with practitioners from Burundi, Canada, Myanmar, Germany, Grenada, the Philippines, South Africa, Trinidad and Tobago, the United Kingdom, and the United States. And they have spent, I would say, the past 14 weeks or so in a series of workshops and talks and just meeting all of these persons who are well-established practitioners in the visual arts, poetry, theater, filmmaking, dance, and music. And just this week here, they are learning about social change themes like quality education, no poverty, gender equality, upward mobility, and sustainable communities. So it's full-on learning about the arts, but also learning about pressing social issues. So this program, which started in February, culminates at the end of August with our first annual For Common Good Global Arts for Social Change Festival, or For Common Good Fest for short, where we are dedicating a day to these youth participants. So there's a youth summit where they get to showcase to the world their own initiatives or performances that utilize their own chosen creative skill to highlight their own chosen social issue. Um, it's going to be really exciting, it's all virtual, um, and this is going to be shared with the world, with all of these countries um, where we had facilitators, they're going to share, they're going to be there in the festival, so it's a chance for our young people to be exposed to the world in a really different way. Here is a snapshot of just a few of the presenters and facilitators we have had over the past few weeks. So we had Aaliyah Pierce, who is an American writer, educator, international performance poet, also award-winning. We have here Samantha Inarokundo, 
who is a Burundian cultural entrepreneur and gallerist. She is the founder of 257 Arts, the first ever permanent art gallery in Burundi. We have Abby Charles here, who is a US-based Trinidadian, who a lot of us may know. She is the founder of Benny Carib, a fashion brand that has a social change ethos. We had Jimmy Coco from Myanmar, who is the founder of the Dance Lab Myanmar, the winner of Myanmar's Got Talent for his dancing, and most recently, he was a judge on Myanmar's Got Talent. He was the winner of Dancing with the Stars, all right? Um, who else? Here, A.G. Sanyo from the Philippines. A.G. has a Guinness World Record for creating the longest ever peace mural. All right? Um, A.G. has traveled the world. He's a National Geographic photographer and is just a heavy hitter. But A.G. has been using the arts to tell a story of climate change. So, as I said, this is just a few of them who our young people would have encountered and spent time with. And um, it was really transformational. It was really informative and was just letting them see that all of these people are creative practitioners, but who have been using their talent, one, to make a living, but also to make a positive impact in their country. What is our future roadmap? So over the next two years, um, with grant funding already secured, so we have gotten a generous grant. Um, and we will release more information about it soon. So it means that our For Common Good Youth Arts Enrichment Program pilot is now going forward with two years funding. So in 2022, our aim is to partner with four schools, north, south, east, west, and to implement this program in each school. And then 2023, the same thing. So we are hoping to reach hundreds of students in the next two years. Um, our partners for the pilot, um, definitely Art by Creative Design, who has really jumped on board and supported and been here with us in the sessions and helped us to source participants for the pilot. I'm thankful. Benny Karib, um, who has supported through providing scholarships to some of these students. Cassie RC, which is out of South Africa. Um, the uh, programming partner, Raft out of the U.S., a programming partner, 257 Arts in Burundi, ECR, which is the space that I'm in now, which I founded, by Lee, out of the U.K., and 3E Programs, Inc., which is a college preparation organization out of the U.S. that focuses on preparing um, youth of color for college. So this week, our young people have been with them learning about social change issues. Our contact information here, so for common good platform at gmail.com, Facebook for common good platform, Instagram.com for common good platform, and just a few weeks ago we launched www.forcommongoodplatform.org, which is going to be the hub for all of our arts for social change, info, events, knowledge, everything moving forward. Yeah. So all I have to say now is thank you. Um, and I'm willing to take any questions or anything that you may have in particular on the Youth Arts Enrichment Program or any of our other initiatives. Well, this has been so great, um, Kevin. Thank you for this overview of the program. What we're going to do is we're going to take a little, a little break. We're going to share, um, share an item as presented to us by Jesse Jagnarine out of Golden <laughs> And we have been partnering with Golden Hands because they are celebrating 28 years of pan excellence. And so we'll be happy to have them on board. And when we come back, we will talk a little bit more about the For Common Good platform. Yeah.
Thank you so much, Jesse, for sharing your talent with us. And before we get back into conversing with Kevon, I just wanted to share a little bit with you about our ABCD booth here at the CAPS conference. All right, so I hope I can bring it up. Yeah, I'm not seeing it right now. So I will come back to that. I'm not seeing it. Uh, but we will be posting the link. And we've been sharing it all the time. So we'll be posting the link to that. So I will just stop sharing. Right. And you can follow us on our social media pages. Our social media pages on Facebook and Instagram, where you will have all the links to all our different features including our N Kindle Virtual Visual Arts Exhibition. Um, it's featuring art pieces presented by various arts educators throughout Trinidad and Tobago with a special photo exhibit from photographer David Stefan Huggins of DSHG Co. Yes? So, come on, let's get back into it. And 
you know, you shared so much about this wonderful platform called the Poker Mongrel. And yes, Art by Creative Design is very much pleased and honored to be a collaborator in this pilot phase. Yes? So far, no, it, it's, it's been a, how many months have passed so far since we started this? February, <laughs> March, April, May, June, five. Five months, right? And they've had so many different experiences. Um, I'm very pleased to have been able to be a part of some of the sessions. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm, I'm very much inspired by the various presenters. So far as how things have progressed, what has been what are standout moments for you? Um, I think that every week so far has been a standout. Um, even though I you know, you know, all of the um, facilitators, there are some that I knew very well and some who I didn't know that well. But most of them I knew very well. But what is a standout is that even though I know them, is that when they tell their stories a second time, I learn something. Um, so it was, it was all a learning experience and it just made me see how even more awesome they are. I think... Um, Lizzo from South Africa was one of my favorites because I like music. So I liked how she, you know, sang a little something and it's just beautiful. And I think that each of the participants reacted to each of the, each of the facilitators in a different way. So because they all resonated with them differently. Um, I think it has been a fantastic experience and I can't wait to expand it. You know, one of the things you mentioned in your presentation is that this all culminates with this youth festival, uh, a youth summit, right? Mm -hmm. um, you didn't mention the actual date of the day. Is there a date? Mm -hmm. there? It's um, August 26th to 20th, 27th to 29th. So on August 27th, um, we are having a virtual exhibition. So we're going to showcase the work of some of the participants in the other program and we are going to showcase uh we're going to do a film screening so of um films from across the world and short films where they address social change issues um on the second day we are dedicating that day to the youth arts enrichment participants and on the third day is when we highlight the arena value of the exchange people so it's like a full-on 3D program that is going to highlight arts and photography and film, going to highlight the youth, and also going to highlight the work that the adults have been doing over the past six months as well. Yeah, it sounds um, <laughs> it sounds amazing. <laughs> you know, I know that originally it was meant to be a live event. Yeah. Um, but of course, with everything, with the pandemic, the pandemic and how everything has progressed in Trinidad and Tobago, that had to be altered. Um, what was that like for you in terms of the planning and, and switching? You know, like what were some of the things that you thought about that could still be captured in a virtual space? Um, I think I, I think it's fantastic to be quite honest with you. <laughs> um, so the actual Arima by Legal Exchange was actually when we got the grant, we, it was intended that the facilitators from Louisville would come and spend a week here. And it was intended that they would have selected one or two of the participants who would have gone to Louisville to spend a week there as well. Um, so that was disappointing for both, for, like, for, for all of us, even the entities that we were working with, because I mean, that physical exchange is important. But um, obviously, because of COVID, we had to make everything virtual. Um, so it would have lost a little something, but at least it was able to happen. Um, in terms of the festival, though, I think we are going to retain the um, virtual element. Because if we are talking about having this global festival, then the only way to do that is to keep it virtual. So in the future, we're going to keep this virtual festival and then do pop-ups around the world. So all of our partners, we will walk them through of how they do their own for common goods showcases. So it will be a true global event, but the main thing is always going to remain virtual now. Okay, okay. But well, I haven't seen any questions in our chat as yet. But before we move off of this, I want to kind of talk about 
in terms of your um the participants response what has that been like so far what are some of the comments coming through what about their parents have they shared anything with you their parents and their parents are really happy so some of their parents messaged me um and say that they are really impressed with the program um we had one or two parents who had who have started on some of the um sessions as well um and i think what i really like is the commitment of the young people they are really committed um they hardly miss any sessions they you know reach out to me directly for any for any clarity and i can definitely see growth in quite a few of them already in terms of their confidence and stuff i'm seeing that um over the past few weeks they have been doing one-on-one -on -one sessions with some um creators like conrad paris and ozzy Merrick and you know and um i think that is an experience that they can take with them for a lifetime because they are getting to work one on one with practitioners who have made a name for themselves locally and internationally. Um, and you have, been, you have yeah. been calling a wide range of big names, eh? and, <laughs> and, you know, and in terms of the different um, fields these various persons come in. Um, how important is that? How important is it for you as a community leader? who is involved in this kind of space to create those avenues for, as I said, well-established practitioners to now impact on uh, the young persons in a different way. How is How important is that? How easy is it or difficult is it? Um, actually, it's, right? actually, it's not challenging at all. Um, but as I keep saying, collaboration is the new currency. And um, what I have been able to do over the years and i think what my superpower is my superpower is networking and bringing people together so um and also providing something that is quality so basically when i call in a favor or i ask somebody to come and do something the you know immediately know that one it's something that is going to make a difference it's going to be quality but also is that i value partnership so they can definitely call on me in the future for something. So it's about building that community and having your favors inside. I think it's like I think it's important to have that. It's important to know who you can call on and who you can rely on. Um, one of the facilitators, Dahlia, Dahlia Fernandez. So Dahlia um, is Canadian and she spends part of her time here. She's married to Nikolai Salcedo, the actor, the singer Nikolai. And Dahlia was so excited that I asked her to be a facilitator. And she's even taking this thing more serious than me. I'm like, she is like, she's like on them. She's giving them assignments. She's working with them. And I think that's so beautiful. And I think that is a highlight because she said she is so thankful and so happy that she could do it. And everybody, all of the other facilitators are thankful and happy. So it's giving them an opportunity to give back. And it's, you know, you don't have to put money into something you don't have to it's just your time your time and your compassion and your caring so and they all care about these young people and i think that is important especially in a time where a lot of people can feel like they are overlooked um a lot of young people can feel like there is no space for them to thrive no one cares about what they have to say so i think the important thing about this program is even though i had my ideas and what it could be I sort of let them build it as they go. So I didn't tell them what social issue they had to focus on or which creative skills they had to focus on. They are now problem solving and they are choosing what they want to say and how they want to say it. And I think that is important. You know, I, I like how you included some two key words, values. In addition to persons being asked to give their time, it's also about giving that sense of compassion and that caring because it's about empathy, you know. You know mm -hmm. I, think, um, I think a lot of times when people volunteer, they, they, again, when you ask them, to ask, or ask them to assist, it's kind of, again, it's limited. Eh? You tell yourself, okay, it's money, time, but there's also that other social aspect of it as well, right? Um, which is important. And yeah. I feel like, you know, it's the first time I must say, Kevin, it's the first time I've heard somebody present and included those kinds of words together with that whole sense of understanding of contribution. What does it mean to contribute your time? 
especially in the area of youth development. Exactly. Yeah, because those aesthetic aspects of it, it is very important. Yeah. Um, you, you, I know that this for Common Good platform, great initiative, it is in its pilot phase, competing with its youth summit at the end of August. And you mentioned that in your journey forward, you're looking forward to partnering with schools. Yes. Oh, why? 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 Why you? Why it is that you know you made your you and your team made a decision that we're not just going to do it as a standalone initiative, but let's reach out in a meaningful way to the schools in our community. Um. Again, so I'm going to say my statement again. Collaboration is the new currency. Um, my, my formative background, most of my career, I have worked in the NGO sector from the very highest level to the, to the volunteer level. Um, and I don't believe in revamping the wheel. I don't believe in fixing something that is not broken, but also I don't believe in doing things in silos. So even though for common good is doing all of this great stuff, we're not doing anything that nobody else has done before. You know, we are just, you know, doing it in a different way. And so I think about coming from the NGO world. So yes, I, we are getting funding to do these things. And I think it is important to share. Yeah, it's important to share. It's important to spread it around. And schools now, a lot of schools may not have the strongest arts programs because a lot of focus has been on academia. So why not bring us in with this little program and just find and find an hour a week to help empower a few students who these schools believe have a future in arts and culture. And I rather work through and with organizations or entities or schools or NGOs that are already working with youth. Because, I mean, that you have to know your strengths. So for Common Good Strength is about putting together programs. It's about capacity building. So when we decide to exit the field, there are other entities who could then benefit from the work that we would have put in. There is a template to now run and scale these kind of programs. So it's not really about us. That, that's very um, admirable. Big of you. It's a broad view, eh? and I think yeah. especially, I think it's one of the lessons that we have learned coming out of 2020, 2021, what we, this, this space that we're in right now, that um, when we're moving forward with projects, it has to be about being bigger than you. It's not about exactly. you, it's about um, creating avenues for all of our generations, people who are here in, in the now, and not just the young persons, they're eh, adults, and uh, everybody moving forward it's about everybody it's about all and on art by creative design we talk about art education for all arts benefit mm -hmm. for all it's about the all and how we can now um well i know the green term is pivoting but it's not just pivoting <laughs> it's not just about pivoting you know because pivoting mm -hmm. you pivot and you get dizzy and fall down it's about clearing new pathways as we yes. get this fourth yes. resolution, right? This is the fourth industrial revolution, right? It's about establishing, as you say, establishing new systems of doing things. We are going to be doing things differently, and we have a clear sense of why, though. You know, mm -hmm. you know, right? You might not know what they're going to look like. It doesn't matter, but I mean, <laughs> I said, okay, so I have to, as, as I mentioned, I've worked in the NGO world, yeah. and when funding ends, programs end. So when I decided to launch my own NGO, I said, that is never going to happen. So it has to be a way that even if we don't have funding, even if we close down, the work that we did must continue. And I think by sharing and building the capacity of other organizations to carry it on, I think that is the most important thing to do. Your programs must live on. That that is um that's important. Okay, well I I I, I did find my clip <laughs> with our ABCD booth, right? But before I move on to sharing that, um people you're encouraged if you have any questions, you can post your questions in chat. Um but you know, we touch on what's happening in our schools and in a very real way. I just want to share one thing, you know, or what, what are your thoughts? Um, because you did mention the fact that there are a number of our schools, 
right? Where they may not have a strong arts program, right? And then you, with your initiative, you are now doing your part to create that kind of supporting mechanism mm -hmm. in spaces, right? How important it is, do you think, for schools, though, for the school community, to try to support the arts programs within their own spaces? Okay. Um, I think that I would have... You know, hmm? Especially now, now, 2020. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, from personal, so I, I would have attended one of the quote-unquote prestige schools, right? And we only had art up to form three, right? At that at that time. And I believe had we had stuff like arts and theater and music, like what is like what's on the actual curriculum now, my path may have been very, very different. I I may have not me, I most likely would have gotten into the arts. Um, but we didn't have that choice, you know? Um, and then now, even though a lot of the schools have it on the curriculum, I am not sure how much emphasis is being placed on it. And then I am being honest, I'm saying I am not sure, right? Um, but similarly, like how all of our academic subjects, the traditional academic subjects, you have a you know, barrage of lessons and after school and this and this for that. I don't think that is there for the arts. So. I think programs like yours and programs like mine, we are now filling the gap for that extracurricular, after school, extra help for these young people who actually want to have a future in the arts. Um, and I think what, one of the good things about my program is that they are being exposed to people abroad who are doing it. Because locally, I mean, it may not ask me that have the kind of exposure career-wise, so I think that is important too for them to see that there is a future in the arts. Did I drop off again? Hello? Hello, hello, hello?
Yeah, now you're on mute. Yes, I know. I get disconnected from my own meeting. What is going on? <laughs> It happens. It happens. You know, you know, it happens. I, I was not being rude. Eh? You know, sometimes I invite people to your home. It is not a thing like that. Sorry about that. Right? <laughs> Let me just. You, you, you don't sound though. You all, you all, are, you all are very nice people. You from south, so you wouldn't do that. <laughs> I know I go for this hospitality. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was just about to share our booth. So let me do that, right? <laughs> and make sure everything is okay. All right, so we have been sharing the link to our ABCD booth as we were discussing. Everything is virtual now, but we are so happy to be part of the 28th Biennial Conference hosted by the Caribbean Association of Principals of Secondary Schools. So the links have been shared on our social media pages, Facebook and on Instagram as well as on our chat in our live session. When you go on to the link, it will take you to the homepage where you have various opportunities to in interact with us. We have, of course, our In Kindle Art Exhibition. For this event, for this week, we actually have three exhibitions running. Yeah, that, that, that's why I said three. So we, all, we have our Evolve, which is accessible on the main, on the, the main platform, as well as from our booth, you will have access to our in Kindle, right? Here we have access to our live session. So you can join us for our live sessions. We end tomorrow where we go to Tobago first, so we will zoom in, zoom in around, you know, Kevin. We go into Tobago in the morning and we're visiting with artist uh, Tom Lee Roberts. And then we have Trinidad where we're going to have our after party, right? So with DJ Ty. So we do look forward to you all being with us. And before that, this afternoon, we'll be having our special session our final session of Talking the Things. And we have our panel on our panel will be Dr. Isora Edwards, Mrs. Naomi Adonis Woodsley, and Mr. Yadav Mohip. They will be with us. And that session will be moderated by none other than Alicia Psyche Hayes. Right? So do come back on. We started that session at five. Five this afternoon. It's gonna be good. Last talking the things. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> this afternoon here to close out our junior creative studio for today. We have Mr. Kevin Fodringham, who has been with us for the past hour, sharing with us about his for common good platform. Right now, Kevin, we lost a little bit of time because you know I had to go and check on the dog. Right. That's fine. <laughs> I was making a noise. I had to go and check on the door, right? So, um, closing comments. What do you want to share with everybody? Um, so from August 1st, we will start, which is just next week. I can't believe the year is going by so quickly. We're going to start sharing the links and the info about how you can attend the festival. So for, so for Comedy Girl Fest. August 27th to 29th, um, first edition. Um, and we welcome young people, mature people, every people, but especially um, persons who are involved in the arts, interested in the arts, who see themselves as being change makers, policy makers, educators. We definitely want you to attend. It's going to be free, it's going to be online. So um, visit for Common Good Platform on Facebook, on Instagram, and also for Common Good Platform .org to keep up to date with information. And I think it's going to be something very 
inspirational to attend, but also fun. Yeah, so I'm looking forward. I am looking forward to it. It's exciting. It's been quite a ooh, stellar program. I mean, yeah. <laughs> 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 What's going on? But listen, one of the things I, I didn't want us to end without touching on is your work at the East Yard Community Arts Center. Um, it's again groundbreaking, innovative initiative um, in you setting up that creative hub. So just um, we not, I, I can't let you leave it all talking about the East Yard and Gourmet Cafe and I know you're <laughs> together, my Jamaican, where they do mountain grounds and I know you're getting that ready for me, right? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, you yeah, 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 yeah. All right, good. Okay, cool. Good, we got a tour, yeah. Right? So we are in East Gourmet, we are now. So all things local and uh, Caribbean. So you have local wines and chocolates and coffees and teas and all of that. Um, I will show you outside, which is the yard. Um, we are in the process of doing with all of our murals on the walls right now. So this is the yard. That's our intention wall. Nice. So we invite persons who come to leave a word of inspiration. I love it. So okay. there are people coming to the yard. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. And we have East Studio, which is our art gallery, but right now you know that galleries are closed. So we don't have any um art hanging right now, but we have we have an art gallery too. So yeah. Go on, by, go on hang out by that that inspiration wall. Watch what you call it again, let's remind me. Hmm? Your your inspiration wall, what what you call it? Your Yeah, the inspiration wall. Inspiration wall, right. Yeah, lovely. Power comes yeah. from within. Let your art inspire others. Ah. So we ask everybody who comes to leave a word of inspiration. I appreciate it. And and that's what the art's about, right? And imagine if we have similar spaces throughout all our Every year, correct. Correct. Say hello, Makita is the manager of East Gourmet. Oh, hi Makita. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, girl. <laughs> 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 Do I want people that? I mean, art is a joy, but it's real work, but it's a joy. I think that's what we It is. It is. It is. It is. Yeah. It is. So, yeah, so um, East Yard, this is the only thing of its type in the East. Um, and uh, I lived in the UK for about five years when I was just out of, uh, just out of sixth form. And I was involved in the entertainment industry and fashion and stuff like that. And um, every fashion week, so London Fashion Week happened twice per year, but all of the big shows took place in the West End. So it's similar to what happens in Trinidad where everything takes place in the West. And after a few years, they started this thing called Fashion East, which was in the eastern part of London, which wasn't as trendy and stuff like that, but that's where all of the new fashion talent was coming out of. So I was like, Hmm, this feels a lot like what happens at home. So I had it in my mind. I had the man ECR in my mind for about 10 years. And I didn't know what it would become, but I know I wanted to use it. Um, and when I found this space, that is when I was like, okay, so this is going to be ECR, and this is going to be a space that is going to chill out talent from the East. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. wonderful. And great, great note to end on. So thank you so much. Thank you. Fodderingham <laughs> for common good. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know we do our by creative design looks forward to continuing in partnership with you and in collaboration with you. Yeah? Thank you for the partnership. Yeah. Thank you for your support and keep doing what you do. You do it well. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. And thank you for joining us for our junior creative studio today looking out to y'all at five when we're going to be talking things. yes okay bye-bye everybody